Um, welcome to this class on pro prefixes. This verb in class, we're going to learn about prefixes in English today. So let's just type a little message. And let's wait and see if we've got anyone, any students who are going to come along. Um, prefixes in English can be really helpful when you're learning vocabulary because if you learn some, some of the meanings of prefixes, um, it means you can understand vocabulary more quickly, you can guess at it more accurately, and um, you can increase your vocabulary knowledge much more quickly and easily. So. Hmm, what's the echo I can hear? Right, let's get rid of that. Okay, so let's see if we've got, I think we have got some students coming along to this class. And I'm going to test out the screen share. I've got a file we're going to be looking at in class today, which I wasn't able to upload. I'm going to try that again after the class. So let's see if we can just have a quick look. That seems to be working well. Okay, good. Right, we're just waiting now for our students who have booked in to come along. So how can prefixes help us? <laughs> and we have our first student. Um, good morning, Gyro. Good morning, teacher. How are you today? I do well. Great. And am I right in thinking that you are in Brazil? Yes. Uh, I remembered. <laughs> um, is it morning over there, Gyro, or evening? Morning. Uh, it's 4 p.m. 4 p.m.? A.m. 4 a.m. My goodness gracious, you are very dedicated to learning English. It's dull now. Dawn. Pardon? Dawn. 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 Dawn, yeah. Um, that's really great. I'm so glad that you could make it, even though it's so early in Brazil. Are you going to go to work today after your English class? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. It's nice to see you again, Gyro. Thank and you. we also have Claudio. Hi, Claudio. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Nice Hi. to see you. Hi. Nice to... I don't think we've met before, have we? No, no. This is my very first time. Wow, well welcome, welcome to Verbling and welcome to this class on prefixes. Claudia, would you like to just briefly introduce yourself? Okay, well I'm a law student. I live in Santiago de Chile and I'm studying English because I want to travel and maybe uh, do a, a, a master degree mm -hmm. afterwards. Wow, that's great. What do you want to do your master's degree in? In, in? in criminology. Wow, criminology. That sounds so interesting. Is that what you're studying at the moment? I'm studying law. Oh, you're studying law. That's right. You just said that. So you're going to um, specialize possibly in criminology when you do your master's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychology oh, wow. and criminology. Wow. Uh, you must have to study a lot, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that's All right. 
and I'm that, that's why I because I, I like to study uh, ling uh, languages. Mm -hmm. Can you speak um, apart from English? What languages do you speak? A little French <laughs> and Spanish. Yeah, and Spanish is your native language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh well, welcome. Um, let's hope that this class can help you out a little bit. Um, and it's nice to meet you, Claudio. Nice to meet you too. All right, so I think we do have another few students um, who are going to come along, but we'll get started anyway. Um, so I'll just introduce briefly today's class. We're going to be learning about prefixes, um, and we're going to find out what they are in a moment, just in case you're not too sure. Um, but prefixes, I find, can be really helpful um, when I've been studying Spanish, actually. Um, if you understand the meanings of some prefixes, then it can really help you gain more vocabulary, understand more vocabulary, and kind of expand your knowledge of vocabulary more quickly, which I think is always a bonus, uh, because I think learning vocab is one of the most sort of tedious parts of learning a language, at least for me. So hopefully um, after today's lesson, you'll have made a, a leap forward with your vocabulary. Um, and we're going to be looking at a file. Now, I tried to upload the file, but it doesn't seem to be working well. So I'm going to try again at the end of class. And in the meantime, we will just um, screen share. So let me just um, show you what we're going to be looking at today. And we'll get started. OK, so here we have. Um, our file for today's class. I'll just quickly give you a look just so that you can see what we're going to be doing. So we're going to find out what prefixes are and then we're going to be going through some really common prefixes and finding out their meanings and talking about some examples. Um, and I've already given you a link to another blog post on this if you want to read up on it later on. Okay. Um, so, just before we have a look and start with a worksheet, let's see, Gyro, can you try to explain to us, do you, could you give us um, a definition of a prefix? What is a prefix? Mm, some words come from different, for example, Greece or France, sometimes a N G A A sometimes word N G uh, and A A L N some like like this comes from Greece, Germany sometimes Brits. Right, mm -hmm. excellent. So yes, you've got the right idea. Um, it's it's like a small part of a word, a small part of a word. And the important point about a prefix is where, where, whereabouts, either beginning, middle, or end, does a prefix come? Claudio, can you help us out? In the beginning. Yes, excellent. So a prefix is actually the first few letters, or the first, even just the first letter of a word. Um, and the point about it is that. Um, it's repeated, so this particular group of letters is repeated throughout several different words and it has a special meaning of its own. So when you connect it with the other part of the word, um, the meaning is either clearer or more defined or you can work out what the meaning of the word is because of the prefix. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So we'll just quickly say hi to Carmen. Hi, Good Carmen. morning, Good morning, Amy. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Carmen, have we met before? I don't think so. No, this is my first class with you. <laughs> Alright, well welcome. Can you quickly introduce yourself for us? Well, my name is Carmen and I come from Spain. That's wow, soon. that's great. And why are you learning English, Carmen? Uh, because I love the language. That's, it. that's wonderful. Well, welcome. Um, it's lovely to have you in our class. I'm Thank also you. in Spain right now. I'm practicing my Spanish, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, and we have Alberto. Hello. 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 How are Hello. you this morning? Fine, thank you. thank you. Good. And Alberto, just for the benefit of everybody else, would you like to introduce yourself briefly? 
Well, I am Alberto. Uh, I live in Vitoria, a city in the north of Spain. And, uh, I want to, to improve my English. Then I'm in your class. Wonderful. Well, thank you and welcome again. So three of us this morning are in Spain. It must be a good place to be today. All right, so um, we've just been introducing the topic this morning, everybody, and we're learning about prefixes, um, which we've explained are the small um, groups of letters normally at the beginning of a word, which change the meaning of the word. And what I've been saying is that if you can understand quite a few different prefixes and their meanings, then it helps you to expand your vocabulary quite rapidly. So that's what we're hoping for this morning. And we're going to go now to um, the file that I've just shown you. So we'll go back to this. And let's see if I could have maybe Carmen. Um, would you please read out for us what we've got under what is a prefix? OK. What is a prefix? A letter or gro a group of letters attached to the beginning of a word to adjust or qualify its meaning. Thank you. So is everybody clear about what it is, first of all, before we move on? It's pretty important. Mm. Yeah? All right. Just if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt. Okay. Amy? Amy? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. C can you send us the, the link of the page? Yes. Um, Claudio, I, I was explaining at the beginning, I have been trying to upload this page onto the class um, website this all all morning and it just isn't working so I'm afraid I'm just gonna have to leave it until the end of class and then I will up, try and upload it again okay so look out for it um, okay. just during this class we're just gonna have to screen share I'm sorry about that it's quite clear don't worry about it alright that's great thank you Carmen alright so um, let's have a look and gyro could you read out the second bullet point please why are prefixes important? Okay. Why are prefixes? Can you see it there? Because I don't know, Minky. Can yes. You, Sorry. You... Yeah. I'm um, just on the on the sheet that we're looking at. If you have a look at my page I'm screen sharing with you. Carmen has just read out okay. the first point. I want you to read the second. Why are prefixes important? Um, they can help us deduce the means of the world we encounter. Thank you. Um, who can tell us anybody what deduce means? To make out. Well done. Yep, so deduce means to work out. Um, and often you have to do this when you're learning a language, or at least I have had to do this quite often. Um, you've got to try and sit there and think, okay, what does this mean? And often um, deducing, rather than looking something up in a dictionary, helps you learn much, much more efficiently, I would say. So that's great. Okay, Alberto, can you read the watch out for us? Yes, uh, watch out. Some prefixes had, uh, have more than one meaning. For example, in can mean not or into. The word prefix has, has a prefix, pre, which usually means before. Right, so the word itself has actually got a prefix in it. Um, and you're right, yep, that means before. Um, so just watch out, Alberto, with the pronunciation. In English, it's it rhymes with free, so it's pre, okay? Yeah. Great. Excellent. All right, so let's carry on. What we're going to do is we're going to um, go through this list of prefixes. Now, you can see here there's a table, um, and we have the prefix on the left. We have the meaning in the middle, which is blank. And the example words using the prefix are on the right. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and deduce the meaning of the prefix um, either by using the example words or maybe some of you already know the meanings of these. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. And who haven't we seen for a while? Claudio. Um, mm -hmm. 
I, what I would like you to do is to read out the prefix and the examples and then see if you can have a guess as to what the meaning of the prefix could be. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the prefix is a and the examples are a moral, atheist, atheist, yeah. a typical, a typical. Excellent. Yes. And the meaning it's uh, anti probably the, the, the opposite. Yes, very the close, of, very uh, close. Uh, hmm? Yeah, actually in this context if we have a if we have a careful look at these words um, the meaning, yes, it means the opposite or without, sort of like um, the opposite to what we've got in the actual word. So, um, Alberto, can you explain to us what amoral means? A person who has no moral. Yes, exactly right. So, without moral. And, um, sorry, I think I just moved the screen share again. Um, okay. The next word we've got is atheist. Carmen, what's an atheist? An atheist is someone who doesn't believe in God. <laughs> yep, exactly right. So they are without God. Um, and atypical. Um, gyro, do you know what atypical means? Atypical? <laughs> yeah. Any I idea? No? No. no. Um, anyone like to tell me? Something that, that is no typical. <laughs> exactly right. It's without being typical. It's not typical. Um, so it doesn't follow the norm. All right, thanks, guys. Well done. That was easy. Um, Alberto, would you like to do the second one for us? Yeah, the prefix is uh, anti. Mm -hmm. And the samples are uh, antibacterial and anti aircraft. Yes. I think the meaning is uh, against. Absolutely right. Yep, against. So, um, Carmen, can you tell us what antibacterial means? Um, well, something you is against bacteria, I'd say, like antibiotics or something. Yep, exactly right. So we normally use that word in the context of cleaning products. Okay. Or um, antibiotics is in the context of um, going to see a doctor. Yeah. Okay. So you'll often see, oh, this is an antibacterial hand wash, and you'll be nice and clean, and you won't get sick if you uh, use this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And what about anti-aircraft? Anyone who knows about the war? Claudio, any ideas? Um, a weapon that it's used for uh, for for destroy planes and. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anti-aircraft, i.e. you get rid of the aircraft. All okay, right. Well done. Thank you. Okay, Gyro. Um, it's your turn, I think. Could you do the third one? Auto. Auto. Like auto? Yes. And what example words do we have? We only have one, actually. <laughs> Automobile. Automobile. Oh, okay. yep, thank you for adding that one on. Um, in the case of automobile, um, this is referring, I think you all know, to cars, um, and uh, it's not exactly the same meaning as this prefix. Um, what does this prefix mean in the context that we have? Does anybody know? Auto. Yep. It means that you, you do it yourself, or you don't need anything... Mm. Uh, Something like that. I don't automatic. know how to explain it. Yes, automatic is another example. Thank mm. you, Carmen. That's perfect. It just means self. So you do it yourself, or it happens um, without any extra input from outside sources. So autopilot, um, what does autopilot mean? Uh, you're going to have to drive yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So often you. Um, Planes, I think, go on autopilot, and it means that the computer is basically flying the plane, um, which we hope the pilot is still awake anyway when that happens. <laughs> All right, great, thank you. So we'll look at the next one. Carmen, would you like to continue? Okay, uh, circ how, do you, uh, how do you pronounce it? Circum? Yep. Circum? Uh, circumvent? Cir circumstance? Yes. Uh, I don't know why circumvent is. 
Okay, anyone can help Carmen? Yearning around the world. Yeah, so circum means around, moving around. Um, to circumvent is literally to go around. Um, and what does circumstance mean? Circumstance? Like a fact, around a fact or something? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like the situation that is around, I guess you could say. Um, so that one's definitely from Latin. You can see that quite clearly. <laughs> All right. Um, Claudio, could you continue with the next one? Co. Co-pilot. Co-operate. Co-operate. Yes. Right. Co-pilot and cooperate. Means together? Yes, exactly right. It means with. 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 Yeah. Um, so... Gyro, do you know what a co-pilot is? Yes, yeah, like uh, in the plane, have two, one pilot, the co-pilot for some time. Co-pilot, co bridge co Yeah, exactly. So a co-pilot is is basically the second pilot who flies with the pilot, mm -hmm. and um. Hopefully, if the pilot goes to sleep and the plane's on autopilot, the co-pilot will help find the plane. <laughs> okay. okay, well done. And cooperate. Who can give me a definition for cooperate? Something like uh, help me? Exactly, yeah. yep. So if you cooperate some with somebody, it's like you're operating with them. You are working together with them. All right, excellent. Um, the next one, I think we're going to go back to Claudio. Uh, come and come. Yes. Companion contact. Yep. I think it means with también also. <laughs> well done, Claudio. <laughs> That's okay. Um, well done. That's a bit of a trick one. Actually, means the same as co. So, what is a companion, Alberto? Uh, I think it's uh, a, a person who is uh, with the another one. Exactly right. Yeah, a companion is literally just someone who's with somebody else. Um, and what is a contact, Carmen? Uh, someone contact is someone who is uh, in permanent contact with you. I don't know. Is close to you. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Someone who you communicate with, yeah? Uh, so, contract, if you, yes. Contract uh, also means something like uh, insurance for certain, uh, certain situation for, for job or for things. Yes, contract. so um, there's a difference here, Gyro, between the words contact with no R. That's the word we've got here. And contract with an R. Okay. Um, so we have contract is an agreement. Yeah? Yes. And contact is what you have on your phone. All your contacts are all of the people that you might want to send a message to or ring. Okay? Is that clear, Gyro? Okay, yes. Great. All oh, right, I think we're back to Alberto for the next one. Mm -hmm. mm, contra. Uh, Contradict, contra flow. Mm -hmm. I think the meaning is uh, against. Absolutely. Well done. Against. Yeah, yeah. And can you explain, please, Claudio, what does contradict mean? Mm. Um. Something that, that is not quite clear? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yes, that's true. Um, contradict is this word you'll often hear uh, that coming up in um, an argument. So you can imagine like a wife and a husband arguing, and the wife will say, don't contradict me. And <laughs> what she means is, um, don't disagree with me or don't say that what I am saying is untrue, okay? 
So if you contradict someone, it means that you think they're not telling the truth or you disagree with what they're saying, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and let's have a look. What about contraflow? Does anyone know what contraflow is? Flow is like the stream, like the current of a river. So I yep. guess it's the other way around. I mean, you, you, you're against it. It's like, the, I mean, the, instead of uh, flowing down, you're just streaming contra flow the other way around. Absolutely, against the flow. That's it. Hmm. Well done, thank you, Carmen. Um, if you just, I'm just going to scroll down so you can see at the bottom. We've just got two definitions for you. Um, in the UK, contra flow is actually a specific traffic um, piece of terminology. Um, so, Carmen, could you just read that out for us? It's the one with the, the first star. Okay then. A temporary arrangement with traffic on a road is transferred from its usual side to share the other half of the carriageway, with traffic moving in the opposite direction. So it's, it's the opposite direction. Yeah, well like done. Thank you. Low. Yes. Yeah, so this is actually um, just a term that we use in the UK when we're having road works, which happens quite often, um, to move the traffic onto the other side of the road. So it's going against the flow. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Oh, right. Um, Claudio, what about D or D here? D. Devalue, descend, deduct. What do you think it means? Um, go down, downwards. Yes, almost, almost. Or, or um, lose value. Exactly. So, yes, you, you're doing really well. What it really means here is, is kind of in the opposite direction or away from something. Mm -hmm. um, to move away from the thing that's about to come up in the word. So, let's have a look at the examples just to make this a bit clearer. Um, Alberto, can you explain to us um, what does devalue mean? Uh, I think, uh, I as Jairo said, uh, to, to lose the value. Exactly. So that the, that lost the value. Exactly. So we often use this word when we're talking about currency. Currency um, mm -hmm. from different countries. For example, um, the euro has been devalued against the pound, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Carmen, what does descend mean? To go down. Yep. So away from the top, I guess. And Claudio, deduct. Deduct is, is um, to take a meaning uh, from from another uh, yeah. word or another meaning uh, that is more oh, general. <laughs> well done. No, this is it's tricky to sometimes when you have to give definitions. So deduct literally means to take away something, okay? Um, we often use it in mathematics, so can you deduct 12 from 24, for example? Um, when we're talking about numbers, it's quite a common word. Okay, um, what are we up to? We're up to this, so let's have gyro. Hmm. Disappear. Yep, yeah, disappear, and what's the other example? Pass away, something like uh, no anymore. Yep, yeah, exactly. So disappear means that something is no longer there. It vanishes. Um, and what about the second one? Dislike, what does that mean? Something like uh, the same or comes from? Yes, so um, can you have a guess as to what the, the prefix dis means? It's like uh, my brother. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it just means um, basically not. Okay, so if you see dis, um, Dislike means simply that you do not like something, okay? Mm -hmm. Disappear means that it's not appearing or actually that it sort of was there and now it's gone, okay? 
Um, and this is a really common prefix. You'll see this coming up in lots of English words. Um, so keep an eye out. Um, okay, let's have a look at the next one. Carmen, would you like to take on the next one? N, enclose, engulf. Yes. Uh, I know what enclose is or what engulf is, but I don't know how to explain it. Um, could you something explain together? To us? I mean, like, yeah. uh, raised together? I mean, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? No, you're doing really well. Can you explain to us what enclose means? If you had to use, say yeah. it in other words, what would that mean? Well, for, like, for instance, if you've got an envelope and you want to enclose a letter inside, yep. that's the meaning of enclose. I mean, just to put inside, just. Jeez. Exactly. There you go. It means to put in something. Mm. Okay? Mm. So that's the meaning of N. It means to put something in, put okay, into. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. And perfect description. Yes, I'm enclosing this check for a million dollars. Hopefully, we'll all receive one of those envelopes soon. Um, <laughs> and what about engulf? Can anyone tell us what engulf means? It's like to swallow something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good, Carmen. Well done. So engulf, it means you're sort of overwhelmed, you're swallowed up by something. Um, so N is to put into. Well done. Oh, and can right. You, can, can you use it, uh, engulf, can you use it, well, for instance, when you're, you're, when you're reaching, like uh, engulf it down, and, uh, but it's not, or it's, mm, we not use it really. Um, engulf no. has a sense of something really, really huge. Like so, water, for instance. Yes, Like water exactly. in the sea, that's it. Yeah. Um, so it needs to be something bigger than just eating. Yeah, you're right. Okay. But it does have the sense of swallow in that, in that mm -hmm. idea, not the okay, body okay. type of swallow. Mm -hmm. All right, well <laughs> done. Um, okay, what are we up to now? I think it's Alberto's turn, and we've got X. So we've got two X's. Um, we'll give, if you could do the first one for us, please. Yes, uh, the first one meaning is uh, for uh, something uh, earlier or previous. Exactly, yep. Former, Former. is probably mm. the word that we'd use, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so X president, therefore, is what? Uh, 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 it's a man who, who was uh, president, but uh, uh, really uh, nowadays is not uh, president. Yep, perfect. Well done. So X, um, this prefix is often used to make up new words. Okay, so there are plenty of words that already have it. So, for example, you can say ex-president or ex-husband, but you can use this prefix quite freely, um, and people will understand you. So if you want to say that something used to be your boyfriend, your... It could literally be applied to everything. Um, and it's, it's not something you'll always find in the dictionary, but just in informal speech with your friends, you can use it quite freely. So, for example, um, we often use it with um, sort of like situations where we're thinking, um, let me see, relationships is quite a uh, useful one. So you can say mm -hmm. my ex-boyfriend, my ex-girlfriend, my ex-husband, my ex-friend. Uh, my ex band member, my ex favorite video, um, no and it will always be understood as something that you used to do but you don't do anymore. So keep that one in mind, okay, for spicing up your English. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and then the other ex, let's have a look at the other ex, and maybe Claudia, we haven't heard from you for a little while. Extract, expand. Yes. It means um, away or to take away. Absolutely. Yep. Out of. Yep. So um, if you extract something, then you're taking it away. You're removing it. You're taking it out. Um, and what does expand mean? Gyro? Yes. Can you tell us what does expand mean? Expand like something like higher? Expand. Yeah. To make bigger. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like it moves out in space, it takes up more space. Um, okay, 
Great, we're going really well. Let's have a look at the next one, and I think Carmen, it's your turn. Okay, extracurricular and extraterritorial. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I say some uh, outside of something, outside the territory, outside something that is um, on top of, from the side of something. Absolutely, yes. Um, so we normally could use the word beyond, beyond, okay. expresses it quite well. Um, but you're right, outside has the same meaning. So if we say extracurricular, Carmen, what do we mean? I think it's something that is not in the curriculum, there is something that you add up on something. Absolutely, well done. So extracurricular is nearly always used in terms of education. So if we say um, to a student, what are your extracurricular activities, um, it's, it sounds kind of posh, but actually we use this all the time. Um, it means what kind of things do you do when you're not studying, um, but they're still related to school. For example, um, do you play volleyball, do you ski, any of those kind of things. Okay? Teacher? Yes. But may you may use for extra money? Oh, our extra in jobs and time. Sorry, Jairo, what word did you say? I didn't hear you properly. Um, they may use for extra money. Money? Yeah, extra money. Yeah, you can have this word literally by itself. Um, if you have extra on its own, that is a word. Yes, it means spare, spare. Um, something that you have in addition to something else. So, yes, that's correct. Um, it nearly has the same meaning, you're right. Um, what does extraterritorial mean? Uh, anyone? Beyond the, the territory. Well, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Claudio. <laughs> it literally means outside the territory, beyond the territory. Yep. Um, so we often use this when we're referring to countries um, or territories. Right. What are we up to? Uh, we're nearly at the bottom of the first page, and who have we got? Claudia, would you like to do the next one? Mm -hmm. Hetero. Um, how do, do you pronounce? That's absolutely perfect. Hetero? Yep. Heterosexual mm -hmm. means uh, different or mm -hmm. containing different kind of something. Exactly right. And what does heterosexual mean? That's a... Uh, Mix different <laughs> genders. <laughs> yes. That is not the same. So, yeah, you're absolutely along the right line. So, hetero means hetero, sorry, means different. Um, and if you're heterosexual, it simply means that you um, are attracted to people of the opposite sex. Okay, so if you're a girl, you like boys. If you're a boy, you like girls. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, which leads us on to the next prefix. Um, how about Alberto? Homo. Mm -hmm. Homonym. Uh, the meaning is uh, the same. Yep, exactly. So it's the opposite of hetero. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what a homonym is? Yeah, it's a word uh, that has the, the same meaning as the other. Nearly, yes, nearly. Actually, Actually, if we go the, down, the, this the is another sound. one I've... Yes, thank you. Yeah. It has the same yeah. sound, You're right. um, but different meanings, or the yeah. same spelling, but different meanings, okay? Yeah. So, unfortunately, there are a lot of these in English. I think they can be a bit of a pain uh, to learn. Um, so, this is one of the downsides of the English language if you're a foreign student, I would say. Um, but, you know, there's always um, bonuses to different languages and also difficult things. So, homo means the same, or homo, yes. Um, so, there's a lot of words that begin with homo um, to do with science. And um, the opposite, for example, of heterosexual is homosexual, which means that you like people of the same sex. Mm -hmm. All oh, right, so Carmen, I think it's your turn, and you've got the next one. Ill, in, 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 illegal, immoral, inconsiderate, irresponsible, 
Yeah. Uh, I think it's got a negative connotation. It would be like um, no legal, no moral, no considerate, no responsible. Exactly, yes. And this is probably the most, these four little um, prefixes are probably the most common way in English of negating something. Thank mm. you, Carmen. Very well explained. Yeah. So let's quickly run through them. What does illegal mean? Anybody? No, transgression the law. No yeah, one against the law. Okay. Hopefully no one here does anything illegal. <laughs> um, Claudia, what does immoral mean? Not moral. Yes, exactly. Um, Alberto, inconsiderate. Uh, somebody who is not considerate. Exactly. Are you inconsiderate? No. no. Good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> um, and irresponsible, Carmen. I say, uh, like you're unreliable. You cannot rely on. I cannot rely on you. You're careless. You. <laughs> exactly. This is probably one you'd use after you've talked about your ex-boyfriend, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, my ex-boyfriend. He's so irresponsible. <sighs> All right. Um, okay. So that one I think is quite probably you already knew, um, but it's nice to clarify. Okay, we've got two of the same prefixes coming up now, um, which have slightly different meanings. So, Claudia, would you like to tackle the first one? In. In, insert, induce, means uh, into, within. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, so, insert just literally means to put something inside something else. What does induce mean? Indicate. Pardon? Indicate. Um, yeah, it basically means to make something happen. Um, so mm -hmm. if you, for example, uh, um, an example that comes to mind is induce a birth. If, if a woman is pregnant and they need to induce mm. birth, it's like the baby isn't sort of taking too long. So you need to help it along, um, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Is it no, like force or force is a little bit stronger? Um, it's yeah, force is definitely stronger. Mm -hmm. Induce is, is much more gentle. It just okay. means to sort of help it along. Yeah. Okay then. Um, okay, thank you, Claudio. And what about the second in? Me? Yes. Sorry. Uh, in inappropriate. Mm. It means um, not. Absolutely. Not, not, not appropriate. So that's um, similar to the ones we just um, tackled before. Mm -hmm. All right, so just be careful about those two, the slightly different meanings. I think it's quite clear, though, from the word that comes, the part of the word that comes after. Okay, the next one's nice and easy. I think we'll give that one to Alberto. Yeah, into. International intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the meaning is between. Absolutely. So international means between nations. Um, what does intersection mean or intersect? Between well, uh, a crossroad, for example. Exactly. Yep. So it's when two paths meet, you could say. Um, and the point of intersection is the point where they cross each other. Um, it could be lines, it could be paths or roads. Yes, a question? Did you have a question? No. no. Ah, sorry, I thought I heard you. All right. Um, next one is for gyro. What? Could you read the next one, gyro? We're on to mono. Mono. Monario? Yes. No. Monoply. Um, the, yes, that's monorail, that's correct. The next word you pronounce, monopoly. Monopoly. And the last one? Monobro. <laughs> yes, that's a bit of a silly example I added in there. Um, what's a monorail? Does anyone know? Monorail. No. No? Um, a monorail is actually um, a form of transport. Oh, man, that you will yeah. find in some cities. It's a raised mm. railway. It kind of goes above the above the um, street level, and there's just one one sort of 
road you could get, one railway, one way in which the train can travel. Um, there's, there used to be one in Sydney, I know, in Australia. They're not very common. I just don't think they're particularly useful. Um, but they just yeah. mean that there's one one track. Um, what's a monopoly? A game. Mm. A game? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me choose someone. Claudio, can you explain it for us? Mm, total control by, by one, by something. Mm -hmm. by some. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a game, yes. <laughs> um, a game which takes forever, I think. No, it never yeah, ends that game. Yeah, never ends. No, but it is a good game. Yeah. Um, and everyone is trying to trying to buy all the hotels and the houses and become the monopoly. Um, all right, so yeah. And what about monobrow? Does anyone know what a monobrow is? No. No? Um... A monobrow is literally um, when you have your eyebrows connected, so you have hair here. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit of a silly word, but um, I added that one in for fun. Okay. Uh, what are we up to? Carmen, non. Or is something negative. It's a negative prefix. Yeah, exactly. It's very simple. Um, so it means not or it can mean without. So a non-event is a word that we use when something's just been an absolute disaster. Um, you, you go to something like a concert or a, I don't know, a show, and if you say, oh, that was a non-event, it means it was just hopeless. There was oh, nothing exciting okay. about it. It was boring. No one turned up. That type of thing. Okay, uh, okay, okay. It's quite mm -hmm. an informal word, though, so just be careful about using that in writing. Um, okay. And a non-entity... An entity is, 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 a, is a spirit, a body, or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is so, funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, something that's got uh, flesh is not, it's not a ghost. I, I don't know. I don't have any idea at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely. So um, does anyone else know what a non-entity is? Not really. Um, it's it's literally just what Carmen said. It's um something a person or something with no particular special qualities. It's not. It doesn't stand out. It's similar to non-event. Um, kind of oh, nothing okay. much to say about it. Okay. Yeah, but not a ghost. Not a ghost, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you could use it to describe a ghost. I'll probably understand, but you might need to give me a few more words to help me out. So I mean, yeah. like when you say he's a nobody, he's a non entity. Yeah. Exactly. Non okay, yeah. okay, get it. Absolutely. All right, um, Claudio, Omni. Omni. Mm -hmm. Omnis. Omni. No, omniscient. Omniscient. Yeah. How do you say it? Omniscient. Omniscient. Means uh, totally. Yep. Absolutely. All. All encompassing. All. Um, every, yeah. Um, so omniscient, what does that actually mean? When you uh, are that is everywhere. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, both of you are correct. So um, sometimes we talk about God being omniscient, if you believe in God. Um, it means that he's everywhere. Um, you can also say omnipresent. Omnipresent means that he's present in all locations. Or she, if you prefer to talk talk about God using she. Um, okay. Um, so that one's quite to do with numbers again. We've got quite a few mono, omni, or a few more coming up. Um, post. Alberto, can you do post for us? Yes. Uh, post. Postmortem. Postnatal. Postnatal. Uh, yep. Uh, before. Um, at, no, post actually means after, Alberto. Uh, after, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so what is po what's a post-mortem? Yeah, it's uh, after uh, somebody died. Yeah. Um, so maybe um, in your criminology masters, Claudia, you will learn yeah. about post-mortems. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, sadly. And what about postnatal? Anyone? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
when the the cares uh, that uh, that are made to a uh, to a uh, Russian uh, bird uh, boy. Yes, absolutely. After birth. After okay, birth. After birth. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. And so it, it means. <laughs> 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 um, so postnatal is literally anything to do with after birth. So yeah. Um, we talk about postnatal depression, for example, which hopefully mm -hmm. not many people will get because that's a bit sad. But um, yeah. All right. So um, in the opposite to post, we have Carmen. The next one. Uh, yes, the opposite. Just pre seed, prepare. And what does pre mean? Pre means uh, with the opposite. It's before. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And can you explain to us what does proceed mean? Proceed means something that hmm, I'm preceding you for for instance you're walking and I'm ahead. So the second <laughs> second to, to none and I'm the first one. Yes, exactly right. So you're the one who comes first yes. or before. Yeah. Um and prepare, I think we all know what that means. It means to get ready for something that's coming up. Um so you have hopefully all prepared well for this class. So it sounds like you have. Um all right Sub, let's go to gyro. What does what words have we got here, gyro? What teacher? Can you do sub for us? Submarine. Yeah. Submarine. Submarine. And yes, yeah, submerge. Submerge on um, something. Submarine, something like a, under the sea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, um, it's a, a ship that goes under the sea, you're right. And what does submerge mean? Submerge is something like, a, for example, dip. Like dip. Yes. Yeah, well done. Mm -hmm. So therefore, sub means what? Like water. It, yeah, actually, not to do with Under water, water, although both of these examples are connected to water. Um, <laughs> yes, you're right. What, what does it mean? I think I heard someone say it was it cloud was it Alberto? Yeah, some, uh, to put uh, something under the water. Yes, so actually um, submerge means to put something under the water. The prefix sub simply means under. Okay, so submarine is under the sea, and submerge is to put under the water. Hmm. That's correct. Um, Okay, we're on to trans, and I think Claudio, it's your turn. Trans, transmit, transcontinental, transvestite. Mm -hmm. It means uh, to go farther. Um. Yes, close, close. I would say a better definition would be across. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what does transmit mean? to convey something. Exactly. So it's like you're um, moving something across space so that somebody else receives it, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, what about transcontinental? Something that goes across continent. continent. Yeah, exactly right. Um, mm -hmm. And transvestite? <laughs> Someone who dresses like the uh, a woman. <laughs> yes, or normally. Man, so. Yeah, exactly. So it's someone who's going across the boundaries of of um, what we are supposed to dress like. Um, mm -hmm. So it's somebody who normally we um, for a man who likes to dress up as a woman. Yeah, absolutely. Right, and I think we've had we actually have someone new joining us. Is it Kiro Caro? Yeah. Hi. 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 Hi, Hi, nice to see you. Um, Thank you. I hope you're following okay. Um, we're up to try. Would you like to read out the examples that we have for try, Caro? All right. Tricycle and triathlon. Yes. So what's a tricycle? I know something has uh, like like bicycle. Has yep. three three wheels. Yes, absolutely. And normally these are for little children. Um, when they can't balance on a bike, they have a tricycle. And um, what about triathlon? 
know. Does anyone know what a triathlon is? Yeah. Yes. It's for the transition free tip groups. Yep. And what are they, Alberto? Well, uh, swimming, running, um, yeah. and going bicycle and playing bicycles. Yeah. Mm. Cycling, cycling. Yes. Yeah, hard. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone here ever done a triathlon? I've never done one. They look difficult. Have you done one, Carmen? The tree, no, never. No. Oh. no. One at a time. I swim. The other day I would um, run, and the other day I was I was cycling. But yeah, that sounds more like me. <laughs> no, all together. <laughs> all right, I think they're pretty. Um, they are hard work. They always look tough when I watch it on TV while yeah. I'm eating my popcorn. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so try, <laughs> try therefore means what? Mm, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. You don't get it, Caro. So try um, at means three. If we use this prefix, oh. we're talking about something to do with the um, three. So three wheels, three sports. Um, a triangle has three sides, yeah? Yeah. All right. Um, okay, two more to go in the last five minutes. Let's see if we can do it. Claudio, can you do un? Un, unfinished, unacademic means uh, anti or not. Exactly. Yep, so if something is unfinished, you have not finished. Um, what is, what's something that's unacademic? Um, Carmen. Well, it's, it's the opposite of being academic. It's uh, something that that you do, there is is not properly <laughs> done in talking about academic terms. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And the very last one, um, maybe Gyro. Would you like to take on the last one? Are you still there? Maybe not. Okay. How about Claudio? Annie. Un unicorn? Uni 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 unicorn. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unicycle. Okay. Means what is a one. unicorn? Absolutely, it does mean one. Um, do you know what a unicorn is? <laughs> a horse with a horn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with one horn, yeah? Um, does anyone here have children? Yes, me. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll probably know what a unicorn is then, can't yeah. Yeah? Harry Potter. Aha. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, so a unicorn is one of those animals that little girls absolutely love. Um, I don't know why. I think just because they're magical. Um, they look like a horse, but they have a horn coming out of their head. And I think mm. they can fly as well, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Pretty amazing. All right, so that's a unicorn. And what's a unicycle as opposed to a tricycle? A, a bike, so, sort of a bike with one wheel. Exactly. Yeah. So it's actually just a wheel and a seat, really, isn't it? Um, they look impossible. I don't know how anyone could ever actually ride one of those, but you see them at circuses and, and things. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. People juggling and riding them. I don't know how they do it. Bears. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, in the cycle, yeah. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, so nobody here can can and can anyone here ride a unicycle? Has anyone ever tried? No. Well, no. there you go. There's something to do if you get bored. Um, find a unicycle, and you'll remember your prefixes from the English lesson while you're doing it. So uni, Amy, uni is like mono, it's just one. It is, yes, it is, exactly right. Yeah. All right, so um, just at the very bottom of this page, um, there's a, another blog post that you are welcome to go and read, um, and it has some prefixes, a little bit more explanation. Um, and just, just before we go, I just wanted to remind you, I'll try now again to upload this file onto um, the class link, okay? So just keep an eye out for it. I don't know why it wasn't working this morning. Um, does anyone have any questions about prefixes or um, anything that we've covered in this class before we go? Mm. Or any comments? They are easy for us because our... From the Latin 
language. Okay. Mm. Absolutely, yes. Mm. I think um, depending on what language um, you speak as your native language, they can be easy or, or really difficult. So mm. I'm, I'm glad, yeah. Um, just keep an eye out for them when you're using your English. Um, and yeah, I think most of these have a similar meaning in Spanish, right? Yeah. Most Spanish speakers. Okay, um, and sometimes they can trip you up, so watch out um, for those false friends. Yeah. And Caro, whereabouts are you from? Uh, me? Mm-hmm. I'm from Egypt. You're from Egypt. All right, so maybe um, these prefixes are a little bit different to... Do you speak Arabic? Mm, yeah, it's different. Yeah, I think so. Well, I hope it's been helpful to you all, even though um, you may already have known some of them, maybe even just as a reminder. Um, it was lovely to speak to you all this morning. I will upload the file after class, um, and I hope to see you all again. Thank you, Amy. You're Thank welcome. You. Where are you from? All right, take care, everybody. Nice Bye -bye. to see you. Bye. 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 Bye.